Hi guys and welcome to InVision Studio. In this very first lesson, I'd like to show you the studio's interface and some basic shortcuts. So we're going to start off by uh, explaining this welcome screen. You can select different devices that you design for as well as you can click on this little arrow to select different device. Obviously, you can also start from blank canvas. You can uh, learn from the resources or just give feedback as well as run some tutorials. From there, you can also open a studio file from uh, your hard drive or you can open and import a sketch file that will do that in a minute. So let's first create a new blank file, but I'm going to show you a tutorial with the animation. So I click on the animation tutorial and here we have studio's interface as well as short tutorial that I'll follow and I simply select this um, items here on the artboard one, press C and create a transition to the artboard two. And the trigger for this interaction will be swipe right as well as I'll uh, click on the motion. And that's basically it. Uh, I don't mean to explain it in detail right now, but what I'd like to show you is that you can go to this little apply icon and now you can play your first prototype. Let's make it full screen and let me show you how it works. So if I swipe right, you'll have the transition to the next screen. So it's really cool because you can swipe right and left and right and this all comes automatically out of studio. So for the interface, you have different things here, but it's pretty simple. It's made out of pages, so you can create multiple pages. And if you've ever used Sketch or XD, this is really familiar. If you go to the first page, you can rename it. You can see the layer structure and the layers are basically organized in groups as well as the artboards. So we have different artboards here and we can easily create new ones or duplicate the existing ones. The structure with pages, artboards, groups and layers might be a little bit confusing for beginners, but you'll soon realize that your UI designs can have multiple or even hundreds of artboards and then this is really useful uh, to be able to group them into pages. So as a side tip for my workflow, I usually uh, use pages for different flows. What is flow? Basically, this is a task for the user. So if my user has the task to purchase something on my website or to log in on my website, this is a different flow. This kind of flow usually contains uh, multiple artboards and I usually group them in one page, not only because of the structure, but also to have a bit better performance in the software. As you might imagine, if there are hundreds of artboards, there will be thousands of layers and you have to find some ways to manage those layers. So first thing is giving them proper names in order to rename the layer. You can simply double click on this layer and you can write whatever you wish. Then you can also rename the group and artboards the same way. You simply double click on its name and give it a proper name. If you want to rename many layers at once, there is a handy shortcut, which is tab. If you press tab many times and you have one name selected, you can rename multiple layers. Then you can press return and you can accept those changes. In order to group layers, you'll have to select them first. So there are many ways in uh, which you can select layers. One of them is within the layers panel. You can click on a layer and if you want to select any other layer, you press and hold command and then you click on uh, the other layers. So this uh, way you can select multiple layers or deselect the layers. If you have the layers selected, it's as easy as pressing command G to group them all together. As you can see, the group that I've created has identation and it means that it is inside the group one. So it means you can have multiple nested groups and layers inside. And if you want to change the stacking order, you can simply select the group and drag it, for example, here. Please bear in mind that the stacking order is important because those groups and layers that are on the top will also appear at the top of the other layers on the artboards. So it will simply cover everything that's sitting below. Now, there's also one way to select any layer, uh, and this is directly on the artboard. If you hover over different elements on the artboard, you'll see that they are being highlighted here as well as in the layers panel. And if you click on this very object, it will be selected. So now I've selected the group. Now, if you want to select the layers that sit inside of the group, you have to double click. If I double click, now I'm inside of the group and I can select individual layers or you can click outside. And now if you have uh, the group selected, you can simply command uh, click on every individual layer 
And this is the way that you can uh, select elements directly, even if they're in nested groups, with one click. In the Layers panel, you'll find some different icons as well. So this icon will let you hide and reveal different layers or groups. We can click on this icon, or you can use a keyboard shortcut, which is Command-Shift-H. So you press Command-Shift-H, and you can show or hide some layers. Sometimes it's useful to hide some groups or layers in order to not be able to select them on the artboard. So if something is going in the way in the artboard and you keep selecting it, sometimes you can simply hide it and you won't be able to select it. But there's also a better way. You can lock the layer by pressing Option and holding Option while clicking on this little eye icon. It now changes to a lock icon, so you can click on the lock. And if you want to unlock this layer, you can click once more. In order to lock a layer with a keyboard shortcut, you press Command-Shift-L. So Command-Shift-L will lock and Command-Shift-H will hide the layer. So locking a layer temporarily disables this layer for being selected, so it's also very useful. Apart from those icons, you'll see the little home icon, and it means that this particular artboard is being a home screen. And also, you'll see a little home here next to the artboard's name. Well, it means that if you run a prototype, this will, by default, start from this home artboard. However, if you select any other artboard, for example, Artboard 2, and go to Preview, you'll see that this Artboard 2 is being displayed right now. But if you want to go to Home from here, it's as easy as pressing Command-R, and now the Preview is being refreshed so that it starts from the home screen. You can always change the home screen by simply clicking uh, on the name with the right mouse button and then uh, setting this artboard as home. The next icon that we have here is the little thunder icon. It symbolizes the transition, so the animation that's going on between this very object and the next screen. If you want to see the animations, it's as easy as pressing X. If you press X, it will visualize all the transitions and animations happening within this element or this artboard. If you want to create an animation, you either press C, as I told you before, or you simply click on this little thunder here, just add the interaction. There is one more type of elements that you can see uh, in the Layers panel, and those are components. I won't explain them in detail, but if you create component out of anything that we have uh, on the Layers list, you'll see a different icon here. So this symbolizes a component. OK, so let's quickly recap and also add some keyboard shortcuts that will let you effectively work with the Layers panel. So you can search for layers by typing only a part of their name and quickly find them this way. You can double click or you can use a keyboard shortcut of Command R to change the name of the group or the layer. And if you want to keep changing the names, it's as easy as pressing Tab. If you press Tab a couple of times, you'll go down in the sequence of layers. But if you want to go up, you can also do this by pressing Shift Tab. So Shift Tab will go up and Tab will go down. If you uh, change the name and want to accept it and go out, you can simply press Return. I've zoomed in and let me command click to select any layer. Now you can cycle between the layers with Tab and Shift Tab to go upwards. And if you want to change the stacking order, you can move forward and move backward with Option Command Up Arrow or Down Arrow. And also, you can press Escape to go to the parent. So you can press Escape a couple of times if you have nested groups. And finally, one last shortcut is ungrouping layers. So I've already told you that Command-G will group the selected layers, but if you want to ungroup them, you can press Command-Shift-G and you will destroy the group. So that's it about the layers, and uh, I hope that you remember those shortcuts. They are pretty essential for effective workflow. I'll see you in the next lesson.